Now we went out to the wall. I just showed you a lot of different uh, fill-ins that you can make in your pieces. And now I'll just make some, a few of them. Um, like we take each of the locks in the letter and then we fill it out with three different nuances. So because this is already uh, the middle nuance of the blue, I will only fill uh, this part with the darker nuance all the way over. And in the middle I'll do some white. And then it will create this effect of going from dark to middle to the white. This blue is not covering that well, but you get the idea. Like now we have this, and if we hadn't made the fill-in uh, as we had with this one before, the single color, then I would take this color and fill this mount in from all of the sides. So now I'll actually just progress on to the white. As you can see, I'm trying to keep the same distance, um, or like the same width of the different uh, colors. Like this one is this width, and it's the same over here, almost. As you can see, this is a little bit too big. But it's to give the impression that, um, expression that the letter is more white in the middle, and then more dark in the end. So you could leave this, like if I had, um, like I would color this out even more, so it's like completely uh, covered out and you can't see the lines as here, but as I said, the blue is not covering that nicely. Um, but you could leave it as this and then that would be fine. You could maybe make some, like some white line stuff, uh, highlight things like this. And then like do that all over and that would be fine. But what I want to show you now is actually to try to make a fading between all these colors. So I will take the middle color and then I'll actually start and try to fade it. Okay, so now I made the, like a fading, or like a dusty look uh, where we are going from this um, darker nuance blue to the middle nuance blue to white. And again, you can leave this as it is and then that would be a fine fill in. But I think I will try to make some details with the white so it looks like it's maybe lightning or something that is coming out. So I will just like make super, super small lines. As you can see, I'm barely pressing down on the nozzle, on the cap. Notice where my finger is, it's, it's right at the end. It's like this, so I'm pressing down right here, not on top of it. This helps me make these super small lines. And this is easier to do if the ca can is half empty or half filled. Um, <laughs> the great paradox. Um, because then there's less pressure in it. Like it's difficult to do these lines with a, a totally new cane uh, or completely new cane because then there is a lot of pressure in it. But if the cane is completely new, like this one, then you would just take it and then do like this for a minute because then you take out the pressure and then it's easier to 
uh, to control. That's a small tip. I'm dusting them a little bit to get a little bit more effect into them. Yeah. And now I'll make some cutbacks in order to get the black back, or like the outline and the, the, the shadow, and then you can see the final result. Yeah, so there you can see the result from it. Like it's, there's a lot of power in this one when you're really adding this uh, fading uh, and then the lightning things uh, with the white at the end. Um, when, and when you're making fill-ins like this, where you're dusting a lot and where you're fading a lot, of course you should uh, make your um, uh, fill-in in your shadows afterwards because otherwise you would be wasting a lot of paint. Uh, like I just did, I just painted over my blacks again which like uh, made me lose maybe a quarter of a can. So uh, think smarter in terms of this. An exercise for you is now to take, again, make a letter like this and then choose four of the different fill-in types I just showed you on paper inside or one of these uh, and then make it on the same letter. So make one letter with one fill-in, take a picture, paint it over with the next fill-in, take a picture, paint it over with the next fill-in, take a picture and paint it over again with the next uh, fill-in and take a picture. So at the end you will have four different fill-ins and four different ways of how you can make fill-ins. And then you, uh, I think you should look at them and say, ah, okay, which one do I like the most? Where do I need to improve? Were my lightnings good enough? Were my fadings good enough? All these things, like try to assess yourself. And then after that, find one of these and go out and paint them on a real piece, like a full piece. So four different fill-ins of the same letter, four pictures, go.